slide. Let's use our motivating example of predicting housing prices. We're going to use a data set of housing prices from the city of Portland, Oregon. And uh, here I'm going to plot my data set of a number of houses that were of different sizes that were sold for a range of different prices. Let's say that given this data set, you have a friend that's trying to sell a house. And let's say your friend's house is of size 1,250 square feet and you want to tell them how much they might be able to sell the house for. Well, one thing you could do is um, fit a model, maybe fit a straight line to this data, and that might look something like that. And based on that, maybe you could tell your friend that it looks like they can maybe sell the house for around 200. The other most common type of supervised learning problem is called a classification problem where we predict discrete values outputs, such as if we are looking at uh, cancer tumors and trying to decide if a tumor is malignant or benign. So there's a zero, one value discrete output. More formally, in supervised learning, we have a data set. And this data set is called a training set. So for a housing price example, we have a training set of different housing prices. And our job is to learn from this data how to predict the prices of the houses. Let's define some notation that we're using throughout this course. I'm going to define quite a lot of symbols. It's okay if you don't remember all the symbols right now, but as the course progresses, it'll be useful to have a convenient notation. So I'm going to use lowercase m throughout this course to denote the number of training examples. So in this data set, if I have, you know, let's say, 47 rows in this table, then I have 47 training examples and m equals 47. I'm going to use lowercase x to denote the input variables, often also called the features. So that would be x's here, would be our input features. And I'm going to use y to denote my output variables or the target variable which I'm trying to predict. And so that's this second column here. A little bit more notation. I'm going to use x comma y to denote a single training example. So a single row in this table corresponds to a single training example. And to refer to a specific training example, I'm going to use this notation xi comma, excuse me, yi. And uh, I'm going to use this to refer to the i training example. So this superscript i over here, this is not exponentiation, right? This x i y i, the superscript i in parentheses, that's just an index into my training set and it refers to the i row in this table, okay? So this is not x to the power of i, y to the power of i. Instead, x i y i just refers to the i row of this table.
So, for example, x1, you know, refers to the uh, input value from the first training example, so that's 2104, right, because that's x in the first row. x2 would be equal to mm, 1416, right, that's the second x, and uh, y1 will be equal to 460, because that's the first, the y value for my first training example, that's what that one refers to. So, as I mentioned, occasionally I'll ask you a question uh, to let you check your own understanding. In a few seconds in this video, a multiple choice question will pop up in the video. When it does, please use your mouse to select what you think is the right answer. We've defined what a training set is, and so here's how a supervised learning algorithm works. We started with a training set, like our training set of housing prices, and we feed that to our learning algorithm. It's the job of a learning algorithm to then output a function, which by convention is usually denoted lowercase h, and h stands for hypothesis. And what the job of the hypothesis is, is, is a function that takes as input the size of a house, like maybe the size of a new house that you know, your friend is trying to sell, so it takes in a new value of x, and it tries to output the estimated value of y for the corresponding house. So h is a function that maps from x's to y's. Um, people often ask me, you know, why is this function called a hypothesis? Some of you may know the meaning of the term hypothesis from the dictionary or from science or whatever. It turns out that in machine learning, this is a name that you know, was used in the early days of machine learning and, it's, and it kind of stuck. It's maybe not a great name for this sort of function for mapping from sizes of houses to the predictions, but you know, I, I think uh, the term hypothesis maybe isn't the best possible name for this, but it's, what, it's, it's the standard terminology that people use in machine learning now. So don't worry too, don't worry too much about why people call it that. When designing a learning algorithm, the next thing we need to decide is how do we represent this hypothesis H? For this and the next few videos, I'm going to choose uh, our initial choice for representing the hypothesis will be the following. I'm going to represent H as follows. I'm going to write this H subscript theta of X equals theta zero plus theta one of X. And um, as a shorthand, sometimes instead of writing you know, H subscript theta of X, Sometimes as a shorthand, I'll just write this as h of x, but more often I'll, I'll write it as a subscript theta over there. And plotting this in pictures, all this means is that we are going to you know, predict that y is a linear function um, of x. Right? So that's our data set, and uh, what this function is doing is it's predicting that y is some straight line function of x, that's h of x equals theta zero plus theta one x, okay? And um, why a linear function? Well, sometimes we'll want to fit more complicated, perhaps non-linear functions as well, but since this linear case is the simpler building block, we'll start with this example first of fitting linear functions, and we'll build on this to eventually have more complex models and more complex learning algorithms. Let me also give this particular model a name this model is called linear regression, or this for example is uh, actually linear regression with one variable, with the variable being x. Right? So predicting housing prices is a function of the one variable x. And another name for this model is univariate linear regression. And univariate is just you know, a fancy way of saying one variable. So that's linear regression. In the next video, we'll start to talk about just how to go about implementing this model.
In this video, we'll define something called the cost function. This will let us figure out how to fit the best possible straight line to our data. In linear regression, we have a training set like that shown here. Remember our notation, m was the number of training examples, so maybe m equals 47. And the form of our hypothesis, which we use to make predictions, is this uh, linear function. To introduce a little bit more terminology, these uh, theta 0 and theta 1, right, these theta i's are what are called the parameters of the model. And uh, what we're going to do in this video is talk about how to go about choosing these two parameter values, theta 0 and theta 1. With different choices of the parameters theta 0 and theta 1, we get different hypotheses. different hypothesis functions. I know some of you will probably be already familiar with what I'm going to do on this slide, but just to review, here are a few examples. If theta 0 is 1.5 and theta 1 is 0, then the hypothesis function will look like this, right? Because your hypothesis function will be h of x equals 1.5 plus you know, 0 times x, which is this constant value function that's just flat at 1.5. If theta 0 equals 0, theta 1 equals 0.5, then the hypothesis will look like this, and it should pass through this point 2, 1, since you now have h of x, so really h sub, sub straight theta of x, but sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll just omit theta for brevity. So h of x will be equal to just 0.5 times x, which looks like that. Um, and finally, if theta is equals 1, and theta 1 equals 0 0.5, then we end up with a hypothesis that looks like this. Let's see, it should pass through the 2, 2 point, like so. This is h subscript. In linear regression, we have a training set, like maybe the one I've plotted here. What we want to do is come up with values for the parameters theta 0 and theta 1, so that the straight line we get all of this corresponds to a straight line that somehow fits the data well, like maybe that line out there. So how do we come up with you know, values theta 0, theta 1, that corresponds to a good fit to the data? The idea is we're going to choose our parameters theta 0, theta 1, so that h of x, meaning the value we predict on input x, that this is at least close to the values y for the um, examples in our training set, for our training examples. So in our training set, we're given a number of examples where we know x, the size of the house, and we know the actual price it was so So let's try to choose values for the parameters so that at least in the training set, given the x's in the training set, we make reasonably accurate predictions for the y values. Let's formalize this. So linear regression, what we're going to do is I'm going to want to solve a minimization problem. So I'm going to write minimize over theta 0, theta 1. And um, I want this to be small, right? I want the difference between h of x and y to be small. And one thing I might do is try to minimize the squared difference between the output of my hypothesis and the actual price of a host. Okay, so let's fill in some details. Remember that I was using the notation xi comma yi 
to represent the I've training example. So what I want really is um, to sum over my training set, sum from I equals 1 to M, of the squared difference between this is the prediction of my hypothesis when it is input the size of house number i, right, minus the actual price that house number i was sold for. And I want to minimize the sum over my training set, sum from i equals 1 through m, of the difference, of so the squared error, squared difference between the predicted price of a house and the, and the price that it was actually sold for. And just to remind you of your know, notation, m here was the uh, size of my training set, right? So little m there is the, my number of training examples, right? That hash sign is the abbreviation for number of training examples, okay? And to make some of our later math a little bit easier, um, I'm going to actually look at, you know, 1 over m times that. So I'm going to try to minimize my average error, which is going to minimize 1 over 2m. The, putting the 2, the constant, you know, 1 half in front, um, it just makes some of the math a little bit easier. So minimizing one half of something, right, should give you the same values for the parameters theta zero and theta one as minimizing that function. Um, and just to make sure this 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 equation is clear, right? This expression in here, h subscript theta of x. This is my this is our usual, right? That's equal to this plus theta one x i, and um, this notation, minimize over theta 0 and theta 1, this means, you know, find me the values of theta 0 and theta 1 that causes this expression to be minimized. And this expression depends on theta 0 and theta 1. Okay? So, just to recap, we're posing this problem as, find me the values of theta 0 and theta 1 so that the uh, average, or really 1 over 2m times the sum of squared errors between my predictions on the training set minus the actual values of the houses on the training set is minimized. So this is going to be my overall objective function for um, linear regression. And just to you know, rewrite this out a little bit more cleanly, what I'm going to do is, um, by convention, we usually define a cost function, which is going to be exactly this that formula that I have up here. And what I want to do is minimize over theta 0 and theta 1 my function j of theta 0 comma theta 1. We're just to write this out. This is my cost function. So this cost function is also called the squared error function, or sometimes called the squared error cost function. And it turns out that, wh why do we you know, take the squares of the errors? It turns out that the squared error cost function is a reasonable choice and will work well for most problems, for most regression problems. There are other cost functions that will work pretty well, but the squared error cost function is probably the most commonly used one for regression problems. Later in this class, we'll talk about alternative cost functions as well, but this, this choice that we just had um, should be a pre pretty reasonable thing to try for most linear regression problems. Okay, so that's the cost function. So far, we've just seen a mathematical definition of you know, this cost function, and uh, in case this, this function, j of theta 0, theta 1, in case this function seems a little bit abstract and you still don't have a good sense of what it's doing, in the next video, in the next couple of videos, I'm actually going to uh, go a little bit deeper into what the cost function j is doing and try to give you better intuition about what is computing and why we want to use it. In this cost function computing and why we want to use it.
In the previous video, we gave a mathematical definition of a cost function. In this video, let's look at some examples to get better intuition about what the cost function is doing and why we want to use it. To recap, here's what we had last time. We want to fit a straight line to our data, so we had this form as a hypothesis with these parameters theta 0 and theta 1, and with different choices of the parameters, we end up with different straight line fits to the data which it looks like so, and there's a cost function, and that was our optimization objective. For this video, in order to better visualize the cost function j, I'm going to work with a simplified hypothesis function, like that shown on the right. So I'm going to use my a simplified hypothesis, which is just theta 1 times x. You can, if you want, think of this as setting the parameter theta 0 equal to 0. So I have only one parameter, theta 1, and my cost function is similar to before, except that now h of x, that is now equal to just theta 1 times x. And uh, I have only one parameter, theta 1, and so my optimization objective is to minimize j of theta 1. In pictures, what this means is that if theta 0 equals 0, that corresponds to choosing only hypothesis functions that pass through the origin, that pass through the point zeros. Zero over there. Using the simplified definition of the hypothesis and cost function, let's try to understand the cost function concept better. It turns out there are two key functions we want to understand. The first is the hypothesis function, and the second is the cost function. So notice that the hypothesis, right, h of x, for a fixed value of theta 1, this is a function of x. So the hypothesis is a function of what is the size of the house x. In is let's try to understand the cost function concept better. through the origin that pass through the point and with different choices of the parameters we end up with different straight line fits to the times x you can if you want think of this as setting the parameter theta 0 equal to 0 so I have only one parameter theta 1 functions we want to understand the first is the hypothesis function, and the second is, in contrast, the cost function, j, that's a function of the parameter theta 1, which controls the slope of your straight line. Let's um, plot these functions and try to understand them both better. Let's start with the hypothesis. On the left, let's say here's my training set with three points at 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3. Let's pick a value of theta 1. So I'm going to set theta 1 equals 1, and if that's my choice for theta 1, then my hypothesis is going to look like this straight line over here. Okay? And I want to point out, when I'm plotting my hypothesis function, my x-axis, my horizontal axis, is labeled x, is labeled, you know, size of the house over here. Now, I've temporarily set theta 1 equals 1. What I want to do is figure out, you know, what is j of theta 1 when theta 1 equals 1. So let's go ahead and compute what the cost function is for the value 1. Well, as usual,